Now, a female police officer who killed a lorry driver on the motorway after crashing into him while on her phone has been spared jail this week. Uh, Jamie Bellaby hit Stuart Murphy's lorry at 75 miles an hour while she was texting and calling. Now, someone else who knows about a similar horror crash is Sarah Hope, the wife of our very own political editor, Christopher Hope. Back in April 2007, three generations of the Hope family were supposedly meeting their new baby cousin, nephew and grandson. But without warning, a London bus ploughed into Sarah, her mum and her daughter. That's right. It left her and her daughter, uh, Pollyanna, with serious injuries. And Sarah lost her mother in the accident as well. So joining us now is Sarah Hope, MBE, in Westminster. We're much more used to seeing your husband, Christopher, there, uh, Sarah. She did send a message saying she'd borrowed his makeup brush uh, this morning, which is probably not a sentence you ever thought you would, uh, you would utter. Uh, but you've been through a heck of a time in the last um, 17 years. And now you campaign on, on this issue, don't you? Um, where do we start? Can I just have yeah. your reaction, first of all, Sarah, to this case this week of the driver who was texting, WhatsApping, looking on Facebook, and her, her crash caused the death of that driver. What did you think when you saw that sentencing? Absolutely awful. I mean, it's just terrible that things I don't... The reason I've... I've launched a petition for there to be a victims' commission for road crash victims because I do not believe that enough has changed even in 17 years since our crash. And it is appalling that that happened. And um, that driver should have gone to prison for a very long time. What's a deterrent for bad driving if, um, if people are being let off like this? It's awful. And the, what justice is there for that poor family? I mean, it's just appalling in every, every way. It's not unusual either, is it? Because I was digging out, I remember Lord Ahmed, who was a Labour peer, no. he was on his mobile phone in his car on the motorway texting. He struck someone, they died. He went to prison for a mere 12 weeks. Absolutely. It's absolutely terrible. I'm glad to say, actually, I've been in Parliament this morning to do debate hosted by Selene Saxby MP and actually my petition was mentioned and my campaigning was mentioned in Parliament this morning so I'm really pleased. It goes to show the government are listening but no, I've listened to some really sad stories this morning for example, um, there are loopholes in the law that make bad things happen. For example, 79% of crashes are caused by people driving under the influence of drugs or alcohol. And yet, if they are in, if that driver is in a coma or not able to give permission for his blood to be tested, um, by the time that they have permission for their blood to be taken, but they don't have to have their blood tested so they can get away with things. You know, it's, it is all wrong because there seems to be more importance in looking after the perpetrators of these crimes. And what we're not doing is looking after the victims themselves as they try to fight justice. And what road crime needs to be treated as real crime because these criminal drivers, people doing hit and run, speeding, holding onto mobile phones, you know, they know what they're doing. They actually know that they might be they might kill someone or severely injure someone. Yeah, it's, it's and the most... yet they're getting away with it. So many laws need to be not just mm. toughened but changed completely. And the government need to recognise that road crime is real crime. The it's... Home Office, the Ministry of Justice, Sarah, it's, um, the Department it's, for Transport, it's, Sarah, they need to come it's, together. It's the most sort of dangerous weapon that any of us get near, right. isn't it? It's a car, a, a vehicle. Just tell our viewers what happened, if it's not too painful for you, to, if you could go back to that day 17 years ago. What happened to you and your family? Yeah. I, my mother, Elizabeth, had come to stay. I remember it so vividly. It was one of those gorgeous sunny days when summer's around the corner. We were going to visit my new nephew at the Chelsea and Westminster Hospital. And um, we decided to get the bus because the, we the weather was so nice and my mother loved buses. So we were just approach approaching the bus depot in Mortlake and there was lots of busyness. There was lots of honking of horns and things, but we didn't really think about it too much. We approached the bus depot and as soon as we entered on the pavement, a bus, instead of turning right into the depot, just ploughed into us onto the on the pavement. And I was severely injured. My daughter, Pollyanna, was two. She got flung through the air, lost her leg, and my mother was killed. And I remember it all. Now, we're looking at a picture of, of Pollyanna really here. You obviously have been on 
a heck yeah. of a journey to bring her particularly back to yes. such magnificent form and she is now a dancer. Oh. Oh, she loves dancing. Yes, there she is with her brother and sister, Barnaby and Sapphire. Um, yeah, I'm, I've been so supported by my wonderful family and wonderful friends. But what the government don't recognise is the impact of these terrible crashes. Why is a road crime treated as less than any other crime? You know, for a, I hear the most terrible stories. Today I heard a story about a family of three that were killed and yet the, prison, the, the, the um, driver pleaded guilty and because he pleaded guilty he got 10 years and then he's probably out after seven. And then one of the things that needs to really change is the government needs to look at driving bans. You know, if somebody's killed someone and they then have a lenient sentence and they come out, more often than not, they are allowed to drive again. Wow. Only four lifetime driving bans have been given out in the last seven or eight years. Four it's lifetime terrible. driving People are allowed bans. To keep driving. Extraordinary. And the point is, yeah. A bit, yeah. There's and of so course, much the government needs to do. Are they listening, Sarah? Are they listening to you? No, I don't think they are. Because I think there's a lot of, I work with a lot of, I work for Transport for London. I've set up something called the Sarah Hope Line, which is an instant support line to help victims of road crashes in London. And we help people on the whole of the London network. But we're not doing enough for the long term impact for those people. No, I write to the government and I haven't heard back. Um, I written to the Labour government. I haven't heard back. Um, no, I still don't think it's until the government change their perception of the way they think about road crime. It's going to be very, very difficult. And there's so many brilliant campaigners. You so many people when they suffer terrible road crashes or they are bereaved by a road crash, they then have to become the campaigners themselves. Yeah. They have to launch appeals into the sentences given to those people mm. that have essentially murdered their family member. Mm. Mm. Because and the sentences are so, so short. So you've got a petition running at the moment, Sarah, and how can people sign it? Yes. Um, it's going to come up on the screen, um, I hope, <laughs> and um, I would love you to sign it because in we need a victims commission for road crash families because there are so you know according to break the road safety and um, one of the road safety charities you know 16 people today are going to be either killed or injured seriously injured on uk roads so wow. the number of victims there are and if you think about the numbers of families you know it's just mm. too many and also i'm very concerned that if the penalties and the sentences are not harsher. Mm. Um, what deterrent is that for bad driving? Yeah, and what you deterrent know? is it to put it's, down your mobile phone while you're driving right. and it's, not answer that text well, message? Well, it's illegal. Everyone should put their mobile phones and just put your mobile phone on your back seat. Yeah. Um, you know, don't do speeding mm. because, you know, 20, 20 have, is plenty. Yeah. Is there for a reason in cities because you can kill somebody at 30 miles an yeah. hour.